Hi everyone, it's Scott Allen from The Raw. Today I'm going to analyse some of the Wallabies lineouts against the French in the third test last week and discuss how Will Skelton fits into the Wallabies lineout plans. One of the issues with having a player as big and heavy as Will Skelton in any team is that it reduces the flexibility at lineout time, as he's hard to lift and he isn't a genuine jumping option. There are a number of ways to adjust lineout plans to accommodate him. Here's an example from last week's test of the option that most people refer to. That is, the Wallabies should run a shorter lineout and position Skelton in the midfield as a runner to crash the ball over the gain line. On this occasion, as you can see, they used him as a decoy and tried to play wider. As you can see, the French have also got their forwards out in the defensive line, and as a result, there's very little space available for the Wallaby backs to operate in. Given the Wallabies have signalled their intention to play wide whenever they can, this short line-out option doesn't really suit their plans, so I'm sure they'd prefer not to use it too often. The benefit of using a full line-out can be seen in this example, where the Wallaby backs have a lot more space to operate in. With the ball delivered at the back of the line-out and no forwards in the defensive line, Foley has the option to move the ball wide to Falau, who's got plenty of space in front of him. Another option is to use a full line-out to create the space for the backs and position Skelton at the front of the line-out as an option to receive the ball on the ground. Here are two examples of the Wallabies doing exactly that against the French last week. The issue with this option is that with the ball delivered to the halfback right at the front of the line-out, he then has to make a very long pass to provide any width for the fly half to use. You can see that Foley's receiving the ball well short of centre field, whereas if we go back to the previous example, you can see that White only has to make a 15 metre pass and Foley's receiving the ball in the centre of the field. That gives him a lot more options to work with. So ideally the Wallabies want as many full lineouts as possible, with the ball delivered towards the back of the lineout. An option often put forward for using Skelton in full lineouts is to designate him as a lifter on the basis that with his height and strength, he should be able to throw a jumper up to great heights. The issue with this is that it reduces the number of jumpers you've got available as an option, and with the skill of the players at international level, three jumpers can be defended quite easily. Here's an example from last week's test that shows how easy it is to defend those three jumpers in a full lineout. The Wallabies have got CO at the front of the lineout, Skelton in the first jumper position, which also opens up the possibility for him to receive the ball on the ground. Fardy and Simmons are positioned in the middle of the line-out, and the French know that there's a high probability one of those two is going to receive the ball, so they'll mark them heavily. Kepu's a floating lifter, who can either turn forward to lift Simmons, or turn back to lift Palu, who has Hooper behind him. Skelton, of course, is in position to jump, with Fardy moving forward to lift him, and you can see there's space opposite him. But it's not an option that the Wallabies use to try and lift Skelton. Whether you consider Skelton a jumping option or not, the way the French defended this line-out says they didn't consider him an option, and they focused on the Wallabies' three jumping options, who I've marked in green. The French countered the option to throw to Skelton on the ground by positioning their tallest player, Mastery, at the front of the line-out on his own. The animation of the player positions and the view from behind the Wallabies lets us have a look at some more detail of how the French defended the line-out. The French have set up in a 1-3-3 formation, with Maestri covering Skelton on his own at the front, and two fixed pods of three focusing on the Wallaby jumpers further back in the lineout. I say fixed pods because the rear lifter of the first pod of three and the front lifter of the back pod of three are turned towards the jumpers they're lifting. There's no intention for those lifters to switch between jumpers no matter what the Wallabies do. This means that the French only have two jumping options and I've marked them in white. The jumper in the middle pod for the French is covering both Fardy and Simmons while the jumper in the back pod for the French has Palu covered and can also move forward to target Simmons. So two French jumpers have got three Wallaby jumpers covered, and the French will be able to get their jumpers up quickly because each jumper has two dedicated lifters, so there's less chance of indecision from the lifters as to who they should lift. As we roll the footage on, you'll see that both jumpers go up and double-team Simmons, and the Wallabies lose a line out in very good field position. Here's another example just a minute later, and again the French are able to double-team Simmons and make another steal. The other thing to note here is that both of these examples are close to the French line, and in those circumstances most teams would leave at least one pot on the ground to immediately defend a driving maul. But the French are so confident that the ball has to be thrown towards Fardy or Simmons that they choose to commit both pods. As you can see in this example, the Wallabies had three frontline jumpers, in Simmons, Fardy and Hall, with Palu a backup jumper. And this makes it much harder for the French to defend. You can see them having to move around to try and work out which jumper will get the ball. The Wallabies need a third genuine jumping option at line-out time, 
and a backup jumper. So they've got four jumpers available. That'll stop teams defending against them with fixed pods like the French did here and reduce the pressure on Simmons and Fardy as the only two frontline jumping options when Skelton's on the field.